Ahoy, fellow artists and comic book nerds. This is part 11 of my comic book coloring style guide. My name is Mike, and today we're going to talk about something I haven't discussed, oddly enough, which is fun. Disaster. I t I, the title card for this video says watercolor, but really, I just wanted to make a mess. I just wanted to play with paint. So I got all these watercolor brushes and splatter brushes and just went to work on Wolverine. Look, I think that any of us that color comic books, we probably, or want to color comic books or draw comics or whatever, we've probably drawn Wolverine, seen Wolverine a million different ways, right? Well, let's see him a way that we haven't, which is just a complete disaster. I've got the, I'm trying to do a different style for every character, right? In this Avengers image, the link is below if this is the first video that you're watching. What we're doing here is we're taking all of the 17 characters in this image and we're painting each one of them in a completely different style, or as different as you possibly can, given that we are just scratching away at a screen with some color. So, this was on a whim. It's late tonight and I just wanted to have a little bit of fun. I recorded it, not expecting it to be usable, but he turned out really cool. I wanted him to be a desaturated watercolor, and then I just started to get sloppy. But as with everything else that I do, whether I'm painting or I know that I'm going to make a mess and splatter all over this guy, I'm still building a general light source. I'm still dropping in shadows, and I have a base color, and there aren't really highlights. Technically, most of the characters in this image are lit with the, the a natural light source from the left. But I may, when I do Ultron, I'm considering lighting him from the bottom and just saying screw that and lighting every character from a different direction because we're, we're not trying to create one cohesive image. We're trying to do the antithesis of that. We're trying to see how, like how weird we can get. So let's get weird. And that's what we're doing here. So these first brushes, I'm just playing around with some downloaded watercolor brushes. Uh, these, the watercolor brushes in Manga Studio, they have, there's a setting by default where you can change the color of the edge. Now you could also do this in Photoshop. In Photoshop, I think that the watercolor brushes are more natural, but the mega, some of the Mega Studio brushes have this very distinctive edge to them. And it, I've never tried to recreate it. I mean, Mega Studio is so cheap that there's no reason to have it, not have it instead of Photoshop. Although there will, there will always be things that Photoshop is the king of. I mean, so much more development power is put into that program, and in a lot of ways, it's a lot more powerful. But the brush engine is completely different, and look, these programs, Sketchbook Pro, uh, Mega Studio, Clip Studio, Photoshop, they don't exist on a hierarchy. There's just different programs for different things and different people, so don't, it's not a be-all, end-all. And the truth is, you can get, whichever one you pick, you can probably get by. Remember that some of the, the greatest drawings in the world are done with just a pencil and a piece of paper. So it's not about the tool. It's about you. Now I've got a translucent watercolor brush. It's, it's very mushy and wavy. I've used this one before. I kind of like it, but it doesn't build very fast. You really have to, even though the opacity is at 80%, that's still, that's like 10% opacity in Photoshop, the way that this brush builds, because it has so much transparency built into it, so many transparent pixels in the actual brush. So it builds with a really strange, warbled texture, very unevenly. And given how kind of zoomed out this image is, it, it's, not, it's not super practical, but I was just playing around. I've been drawing and writing for over the last four hours and you're going to start to hear my dogs cry behind me. It's time for us to go for a jog. But I really just want to do this commentary and post this video while I have the gall because it's just, this is, it's, it's a very bizarre thing. Just wait, to, wait till it happens. I don't know at what point I just decided to, to go completely loose and free, but we, we covered this. We, why do I say we, that's so, it's so bizarre. I think I say it because I want to include, I want everyone, I want you to feel like this is a, a back and forth. Like we're in this together, but it really is just me and my dog sitting in this room. <laughs> so the colors that I'm working with in Wolverine, I'm trying to stay as desaturated as possible. And then I wanted like bright color pops because when I color, 
with watercolor or watercolors that I like, like the, when I, I did a quick Google search of just like famous watercolor, whatever, and went through some paintings and, uh, I like to use fine art for reference. And it's not that I know that comic book, book art can get a bad rap, but the, the difference between fine art and comic book art isn't the talent of the artist. It's the amount of time that you spend on each piece. Now, if you have the luxury, like look, for most of us that are, if you're creating a comic book, time is money, it's your livelihood. You can't, I, there's no way that I can spend the 12 hours that it might need on a splash image to get it perfect. Whereas in fine art, you might, it might just be a simple pencil drawing, but there might be 30, 30 hours into one piece of quote unquote fine art is nothing. But when you have when you have 24 pages to do and you have five days, it, it just doesn't add up. So I, I think it's silly that for people to be dismissive because well there there is also a, tons of quality in art. But I use fine art as a reference because I just want a different perspective. I don't feel like I've seen it all, or I know I certainly don't know nearly enough about. I mean I'm learning just as much as you are probably. But I'm not ashamed to post my work. Not that you should be ashamed, but just so, you know, you know how that that artist fear that people get. I don't have that. If you do have that, go read *The War of Art*. It's a fantastic book. Whether you write, whether you color, it doesn't matter what you do. A book about overcoming that resistance to either work or or share your work or whatever. So now I have these like this huge collection of blood splatter brushes. By the, they're by this uh, an, an illustrator that's known for doing like skull and bones, like Guns N' Roses style album covers, and these T-shirts with these vomiting blood skulls. And he makes all these splatter brushes, and they're really wild. They're really some of them are really cool. I mean, you, you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't paint just in these things, but I'm just messing around with all of them because I haven't used them. I don't use, I don't tend to use blood spatter, but I do like to have a couple pictures of toothbrush. If you, what I would do, this is, this is what I do. So to make my Photoshop splatter brushes, I take a great piece, a great inked piece. You go to, go to DeviantArt and go get, you know, whether it's Jim Lee or whoever, somebody, somebody you really, really, really like and go grab a page, an ink page, and then cut from that page, just the ink and ink, a really interesting looking ink blot. And then turn it monochrome and make that your, and then make a brush out of that. Or you can do that in Manga Studio too. I haven't yet. I haven't gotten to the splatter stuff uh, because I would just bring it. That's kind of a finishing thing to me. And I, and I have those tools in Photoshop. So I've been using Manga Studio now, I think a little bit over a month. Yeah, probably since the beginning of February and really trying to see what it can, what it does for me that's better than Photoshop. Some things it just does outright better than Photoshop. I mean, you can't argue with the flatting capability of Mega Studio. I'll never flatten Photoshop again. It's ridiculous. It's so much faster. Here I'm using a tooth. I'm using the the toothbrush setting. I didn't make it real well. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention real big, but it does seem to be a nice random shape. I'll certainly make make some as well. It's kind of the, the way to get the best looking splatters when you have a really sweet inked piece is to you get a couple brushes that have a, a size jitter on them and then you you if you work in black and white and just cycle for cycle back and forth between black and white and you'll create some really interesting shapes and every, all the sizes will be different and you'll get some weird uh, ellipses off to the side and just single pixels and it'll be cool. Now notice that at no point did I, I don't think I used the marquee tool for anything. I was just backing up with Z because again, I didn't think I was going to be posting this, but it was right, of, right around now, like at the 20 minute mark, because this video is running at two times speed. I was thinking, oh man, this thing might be, might be okay. <laughs> because you're, you're really just, this is, this is how I play. And so I kind of backed off like the craziness. I did, I ended up rendering, doing like a real quick render on his skin. Just so everything wasn't so graffitied. But I do think that with these brushes, you can tell, like you can tell that the light is coming from the left and his pecs are a little bit, you know, whatever. 
it's messy and there are these weird saturated spots. I, I couldn't stop myself from putting a couple adjustment layers or well, I just adjust, I adjusted the layer outright. I, I didn't even use adjustment layers. I just fixed the layer and, and called it a day, which is something I was going to do to all the images at the end. But this one just, I it really, I just needed to see what it, in my head, what I wanted it to look like. And I couldn't stop myself. I don't have any idea what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm adding little, little pops of yellow. And I think at the end I pull out about 20% of the saturation. And then it sort of does, it has just a little bit of a watercolor feel. Just a little bit. One of the reasons I wanted to do this with Wolverine in particular is I, th I think the pose is so stupid. I know that that's crazy because J. Scott Campbell is a million times the artist I would ever be. And he has such, you know, he does such great work. And his, his you know, he draws so dynamically. I just don't, I just think Wolverine looks kind of stupid. It's all hunched up and I don't know. I'm not sure what to title this video. Watercolor disaster. How to how to how to create a graffiti comic book. This would be a cool style, this like super desaturated, not necessarily gray, not like gray with pops of color, like, you know, like Sin City did, but just super desaturated with pops of color, messy like this would make it, it has a good, uh, post, not a good superhero feel, but it would have a good post-apocalyptic type dystopian fantasy. And you could go either way, like you could go technological fantasy or reset button uh, fallout style fantasy and I think it would look pretty cool that's a thought I will file that away because so, and although this is a you know this is meant as a style you know it's called style guide but it's it's an exploration of style more than anything and what I haven't been doing a ton is talk about color choice which is super, super important. And we don't talk about enough because that's what makes, in a lot of ways, like take Alex Sinclair's work in DC. Like he's really just coloring comics the way they've always been colored for the, you know, since there was digital comic coloring, just a lot of grab and grad stuff. And he does a good job blending down. And, but there's a reason he works on Batman because he makes Batman look like Batman. And you can take, you could have all those same marquee selections and all the same tools. And he generally uses a fairly small amount of tools. And he's a, he, I mean, he, I would be willing to bet, even though I'm not saying I'm a better artist than him in any way, right? That guy rules. I don't, but I probably know more about Photoshop than he does, but I've also used it professionally outside of an art context for design and things like that. Um, web graphics and blah 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 so it's not it's not about the knowledge of the tool right who cares how you hold your pencil it's just the result and color is the whole you know color is where a, a lot of our attention should be focused and not necessarily on all these brushes and I say that when I just like <laughs> just created a an entire thing based on you know brushes wacky brushes so i suppose i just defeated my own argument and i am talking to myself so eh, whatever i couldn't i couldn't resist i was like you know what let's just clean him up and he'll be good and i'm like nope i gotta put blood on his arms too even though that makes no sense why is there blood on his arms but it's not on his gloves or his pants there's not even a fleck and I thought about it, and I was like, I could go back and add a little blood here and there. I could bloody up his teeth. 
but this is what felt right to me in the moment. I was like, ah, nah, it's cool. It's cool like this. It doesn't have to make sense. It's a comic book. I'm sure someone's going to leave a nasty comment about this because it's just so stupid and so easy. But I think it's cool, man. I think he's cool looking. Trust me, whoever you are, if you're a a small child or you're a you're a, an aspiring comic book artist, like you could paint like this. There was I had no thought whatsoever in this and and I think it turned out cool. And that's all that matters, right? You just want to make something some especially when you're not when you're just you're exploring and trying to figure out what your style. I'm still trying to define my style. And like and when I have moments like this, you know, maybe a little bit of this will sneak over into that professional work when I'm trying or whatever. And sometimes it's fun to just have fun. So with that, I'm going to let the rest of the video play without audio. Thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. The rest of these will come out real, real quick. It should be about a week and we'll do all 20 parts. So we still have Captain America, Ultron, Doctor Doom, kind of the right side of this image and the left side. And then Thor, we're going to put it all together. And really make him look cool. Oh, Charlie. All right, guys. See you soon. Uh, comment if you have any questions about what I did. Or have a suggestion for something you'd like to see in a video. Here I'm doing the adjustment layers. I do a small S-curve correction. Uh, a secondary shadow thing. Oh, man. He's such a baby. That dog's howl does not match his body. Good night. <laughs>